This video is a follow-up to using JAXLAC scan in order to efficiently roll out autoregressive time steppers to produce trajectories. So in the last video, we looked at the common pattern you see when rolling out solvers and that you have lists to which you append entries and ultimately you stack them. You have a carry that carries over between the loops, typically the state that is advanced. And this pattern can be efficiently replaced by JAXLEX scan. For this, we created a scan function, which had the pattern, if you think of it in dynamical system of being state, times force or control producing new state and observation. And here we said that the observation of our system is just the state itself. So we took the state as an argument, produced the next state and then returned it. And then checks like scan conveniently stacks all the observations into one long array. And this trajectory was visualizable and we saw it produced the same result as if we implemented it manually with the Python for loop. In this video, I want to write a convenience function that does this for us by being in the spirit of JAX, also a function transformation. And I want to call this rollout. And this rollout function should take a stepper function, which it is transforming, as well as the number of time steps. So instead of producing the trajectory itself, it produces a function that produces the trajectory given the initial condition. So think of it as with other function transformations in JAX. When we, for instance, use the JIT command, we get back another function, which is the JIT compiled version of that function. Or if we use the CRAD function, instead of producing the gradient, we get back another function that then produces the gradient. And this is kind of the spirit I want to do here. But it is conceptually very close to what we already did. So let's also reuse this part here. So we will replace it with the fitting argument. So let's paste it in here. Okay, then let's first indent what we just copied here. And then first we need to adapt this scan function here because it's still using the global KS stepper. Whereas here, of course, we want to take this stepper function that we want to transform. And then we will, of course, keep the checks like scan in general, but we want to wrap it into a closure function that eventually will be returned. So let's create that closure function and call it the rollout function. And this takes an init, so an initial state, and then we keep our JAX like scan and indent it once again. And then here we also need to adapt. So we keep the scan function, which it captures from here. Then the U0 will be replaced by init. And then we still keep none because we have it unforced. And then the length is also not 2000 anymore, but will be the N captured from the outer level scope function. And then also to distinguish from the global variables, let's just rename what we have here. So since we do the rollout, we're not really interested in the final state. So let's just use a placeholder here. And then let's call the trajectory history to just give it a different name here. Then this inner function, so the rollout function, shall return this just produced history. And then the outer level function, so the function transformation, returns the rollout function. So once again, rollout does not produce the rollout, but rollout produces a function that then produces a rollout given the initial state. Okay, let's shift enter that. Then let's try it out by producing a trajectory by using rollout on the KS stepper. And again, let's do 2000 steps. And the initial condition shall be the U0. So here you also see the idea of the function transformation. So we have this stepper function as well as the number of steps we want to do. This is the argument to rollout, which then produces another function. And that one we call with the second set of braces here that produces the trajectory. Let's shift enter that. And I will just again, as before, copy the code for the plotting, paste it in here and then we should see we get again the same trajectory. Now there is one more thing that I want to add to this rollout transformation, and that is the option to include the initial condition. Because if we go back up to the original script, which has this pattern of using a trajectory and then appending to it, we actually got a list or a trajectory with 2001 entries because we started the trajectory at the initial condition and then appended 2000 states. And this might have not been clearly visible in the rollout because there's just like so many steps. So we could have missed the initial condition here. 
in the visual inspection, but if we compared the shape of the trajectory array with the one we got from either the direct implementation of JAXLEC scan or the one we got from our rollout, you will see that it is actually 2000 steps. So let's take a look at the shape. So trajectory dot shape, we see it is 2000 by 200. There can be situations where you want to have the initial condition within your trajectory array. So let's adapt this rollout function and give it an additional keyword based argument, which I want to call include in it, which I want to set to false by default, because I think the more general approach to rollout would be to ignore the initial condition, because we might have it as an array anyway. But it is a nice option to include it here. So how should that work? So if we want to include the in it, we could either adapt the way we perform JAXLEC scan or we can do a simple post-processing step. And I think the latter one is the easiest. So let's go to the rollout function and then include a switch statement and say, if include in it, so in the case we want to include the initial condition, then we want to return an extended trajectory. And we can easily do that by saying return JNP done concatenate on the initial condition and the history, so that's the name we chose here in this closure function. And then we want to concatenate alongside axis zero. So axis zero was this time axis, and then we would get a 2000 and one long axis here. And if the switch statement is false, we will just return the history as is, so with the 2000 steps. This will not work because right now init does not have as many axes as history has. So init is the state which just has 200 entries and one axis array, whereas history has a two axis array. So the easiest thing we can do here is to add a singleton dimension, which we can do by dims or expand dimensions. And I want to expand alongside axis zero. So essentially what happens here is it turns the 200 dimensional vector into a one by 200 dimensional matrix. And so this concatenation should work fine. Let's shift enter the revised function, then the original execution of that function should still give us the 2000 by 200 shaped array. And then shift enter obviously gives us the same trajectory. But if we now activate the switch statement or this boolean by going into the rollout transformation and say include in it being true, our shape is now 2001 by 200. And then if we were to plot the newly found trajectory, we would essentially see the same thing because it's hardly visible that there is an additional state here in the beginning, but it is part of the trajectory and that can be very helpful for some computations further down the line. Let's wrap up the video by adding a nice comment string to our rollout function to say what actually happens here. And let's get me get the multi-line comment here and say, the rollout function shall transform an autonomous time stepper. So an autonomous time stepper is a one that just takes the state and produces the next state. So the transformation from one state to the other one is not dependent on time. And in that case, I also mean here that it does not take any additional forces. And this shall transform this time stepper into a function that efficiently, and that's crucial because we don't use the original pattern with just appending to the list, but we will use the very nice ajax -like scan command, unrolls a trajectory. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. And that's it. This is the function that efficiently produces a rollout. I hope you found it helpful. I use it quite a lot in my personal projects. If you want to get the Jupyter notebook for this video, you will find it linked in the video description. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.